And could this be the new norm, possibly for cities all across the country? Is it legal? Well, joining us live tonight is Roger Wareham. He's been a lawyer and a political activist for decades. Sir, thank you for a few minutes of your time tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. What was your gut reaction to hearing uh, this ground that's been broken by the city of Evanston? I was glad to hear it. I think that, um, as Ivan Carruthers was saying, it's a step, and, and, and it's, it's some action being taken. As you said, the, uh, the bill in the um, Congress has been there for 30, 31, 31, 32 years, and nothing has happened yet, and it's still at the point of discussion. So I think this, is, this could be groundbreaking in terms of at least breaking the dam of some action being taken in the push for reparations. And in terms of the specifics of the program, in terms of the money, the grant money going toward uh, housing, do you think that is a potential national model for other communities that may go down this same road? It could be a model. Um, I know there's an initiative in Asheville, North Carolina, which I think has some of the same features. But I think the important thing is that the, the, the people who are the beneficiaries, the people who were the victims of the acts that made the reparations necessary, really have to define that. I don't think there's going to be one model fits all for it, because I think in different areas, they're going to be uh, the injuries are going to be such that they may need to be put into a, another area. The officials there in Evanston, too, did commission a, a report as they wrestled with this decision, and one line stuck out to me. It said, over the decades, policies, practice, and patterns of discrimination and segregation took place. Together, they, quote, not only impacted the daily lives and well-being of thousands of Evanston residents, but they also had a material effect on occupations, education, wealth, and property. That, to me, that line in the report spoke to, I think, the bigger picture beyond just money in terms of what reparations really are about, the ripple effect of being a second-class citizen for so long. Right. As, as, as Malcolm X said, he doesn't know what a second-class citizen is. You're either a citizen or you're not. But the, I think the point that's being made is that uh, Black people in this country have been the victims of a system of white supremacy and racism and of exploitation, which is what brought us here to this hemisphere and the numbers we are um, in the first place. And that, that that didn't end with the ending of chattel slavery in 1865. It continued through Jim Crow. It continued through all the different manifestations we've seen of our oppression and it affects every aspect of our lives. So. Uh, I think that this is a start. I think that the, the, the real resolution of reparations is going to have to be done on a national level. So I think that all of these local initiatives will give a push for there to be a national move to deal with the reparations because it really was the policy of the United States that made that condone slavery, which made it legal at that time which after the war approved convict leasing, which many people may not even be aware of that, after the Civil War, uh, if black people could be picked up for vagrancy, and the 13th Amendment allows you to be, basically slavery is legal if, you're, if you are a prisoner. And so that companies would, they, they just pick up black folks, have them arrested, um, then they would lease them. And then different than slavery, they just worked them to death because the slave owners had to at least try and maintain their property. The, the, late, the lessors, these corporations didn't have to do that at all. So they literally worked people to death. So we faced a continuing injury, a continuing crime, really a crime against humanity, um, which on some, at some level borders on genocide since we've been here and right through to unfortunately 2021, which I think the, the, the murder of George Floyd made very clear and poignant to people who may not have remembered that. Gotcha. Uh, thank you so much for your time, sir. We certainly appreciate it. This is obviously an uh, important and uh, complicated conversation, but I'd love to have you back to discuss it even more if this does indeed uh, spawn action across the country. Thank you tonight for, uh, for being with us. I would, I would like to say just in closing that an action that's being proposed is that President Biden, who said that he owed his election to black people, um, issue an executive order putting down a $50 billion down payment on reparations. That would be the immediate action that the um, Evanston uh, action represents. We'll see what on this, a national level. We'll see if the White House makes good uh, 
on that promise. Thank you, sir. Thank you.